Minister Rajiv Gandhi, uh, we took him to the mural door outside, and then the artist uh, who was there, Professor Salve, was trying to explain to him that the concept of this is that here is science, here is knowledge, and so on, and how this leads to the development of mankind and improving well-being. And Rajiv Gandhi said, Hame dekhna hai. So that uh, it is, I think, uh, the kind of, uh, if you look back at 25 years, I think Rajiv Gandhi would say, Hame dekha hai. He would be pleased at the kind of development IGI has, has, has seen all this. Uh, in 85, I think, when I was visiting from IASA in Austria, where Jyoti and I were working, uh, we met Dr. Manmohan Singh, then governor of the Reserve Bank, to have tea with him. And he said, we are starting this institute. Would you be willing to come? And I said, it's a great idea, and we would be delighted to come. Then uh, a year later, I got a letter from Dr. Rangarajan saying, now this idea of the institute is firmed up, and we would like you and Jyoti to come and set up this institute. And uh, <coughs> then I also asked some of my friends, like T. N. Srinivasan, should I go? And he says, look, uh, you will be set, you know, sacrificing some years of your life or your own work, uh, but the rewards may be very high if you're successful. And I was concerned that there was no building. It was just a bare, barren ground. And how many years would it take before the buildings come up? Uh, <coughs> but thanks to Rajiv Gandhi again, who, when, was, when he was asked as a golden jubilee celebration of Indira Gandhi Institute, I mean, of the Reserve Bank, uh, was told that we had set up this institute, we are thinking of setting up this institute, and that would he be kind enough to lay the foundation stone? And Rajiv Gandhi says, no, I won't lay the foundation stone, but if you promise to get this thing ready in two years' time, I will come and inaugurate it. So it was a deadline was given that by June 87, the campus has to be ready for a prime minister to inaugurate. And of course, this is a challenge that the Reserve Bank could not but accept and execute. And it was a remarkable feat that this campus was constructed in, a, in really in, in 14, 18 months' time. Because at that time when this promise was made, there was no conceptual plan, there was no architect, nothing was there. And starting from that, the building was ready at, at June 30th. 30th, 187, and we were able to write to Rajiv Gandhi that, the, as promised, the building is ready. Please come and inaugurate it. So I think, uh, fortunately, that for uh, to establish the institute, I didn't have to spend five, seven years before the campus got ready, but only two years were enough. And I think I thank the Reserve Bank and its quick uh, and efficient construction of, the, uh, of this building. I think. Uh, uh, but this building is such a distinguished and, a, and, a, and an impressive outlook that we, it immediately posed a challenge. That when we moved in here, we were approached by Manmohan Desai. He wanted to film, uh, do, do some shooting here for an Amitabh Bachchan and a Sridevi movie. He <laughs> says, Sridevi is a rich man's daughter, will be coming down this, this stair, uh, and the, some ruffians would be, would, be, uh, I mean, would be attacking her, and of course, Amitabh Bachchan will come and rescue her. <laughs> and while that was a very attractive proposition to ask them to shoot, do the shooting here, I decided that this would be really a very bad precedent. And because then all kinds of people will come and ask, and this whole academic uh, uh, atmosphere of the institute can be seriously compromised. So I said, well, I have to get the permission of the Reserve Bank governor. And I suggested to the governor that please do not give permission. <laughs> and therefore, we were saved or, you know, we were deprived, whichever way you want to look at it, of uh, shootings of Bollywood films being done here. I think, but there were any other challenges in the building. When I moved here in the first, in 80s, you know, in 1988, and I sit in my office, the building which is in the campus, which is in the middle of nowhere, and one uh, uh, had no connectivity, so I tried to make a phone call to someone in Mumbai, and it took me 20 minutes to get the dial tone. It was such an incredibly poor infrastructure in those days that uh, I was just 
cursing myself where have I landed myself into. But fortunately, within months, uh, an electronic exchange was opened at Goregaon. And I was the one who, they asked me to inaugurate it, and so it was good to, to make the first phone call from an electronic exchange. And certainly, I think then the connectivity improved. And I also recognize that it is important to have uh, a campus and a, uh, an environment where people can function effectively. Uh, when I had returned from Saint, way back in 67 from MIT and joined the Indian Statistical Institute, I had uh, to wait for six months to get a milk card, even to use an influence to do that. I did not get a telephone at home till 1971, four years later, and so on. So the whole process of getting organized and settled was extremely difficult in, in India. So we decided that we would try to provide facilities in a way that one can come and the next day should be able to function. So we had a telephone on every residence, an extension, every desk. We even uh, uh, got 20 cylinders of gas in the institute's name, which were given to faculty members, provided they apply for their own gas cylinder. And once they got there, they will return the one to the institute. So we had always a bank of these. So we took many such measures like this. We also set up the best, uh, one of the best computer set facilities here at that time. And in fact, we, had, we were one of the first institutes to have internet Way back in 1987, we had internet in, at IGIDR. And uh, I remember my son was in Berkeley, and there was an, uh, there was an uh, earthquake in that, those days. And he sent us an internet account, which was uh, first of its kind, and it was reproduced in, in Economic Times at that time. So I, I think it was important to get, uh, get things organized, that people can come and almost start functioning the next day. And I think um, <coughs> we had also kept our library open till late hours, computer center running round the clock, and so on. So there are very many facilities. Even Xerox machine was made freely available to, to staff members. I remember at Indian Statistical Institute, we got of a Xerox machine. And it was such a complicated exercise that when I asked my secretary to, often ask my secretary to make a Xerox copy, he would say, sir, can't I type it? He was <laughs> reluctant to make a Xerox copy. He would much rather type it. So I think uh, this is how, uh, how, how uh, uh, the system used to function here. And I was uh, really very pleased that uh, we had a good campus. Yet we were far away from many things. Fortunately, we got about three acres of additional land. And then uh, that gave us a possibility of setting up a, a swimming pool and I think perhaps I was the only director who had the nerve to ask for a swimming pool. And, uh, Dr. and Governor Malhotra was one of the uh, governors who had the uh, good grace to sanction it. So we had a swimming pool, we had a tennis court, we had a jogging court or walking court and so on. So we really did have a campus where one could live comfortably and function effectively. I think, but there are many other things uh, that, that went behind just thing. One of the most important challenge was to get good faculty members. And this is where I think I spent a lot of time. I must have read some 200 or skimmed through some 200 theses because we had advertised and we got lots of applications and uh, selected very carefully people. And the main reason is that in, in India, once you fill up the place, it's very difficult to then keep some kind of a new blood coming in. In fact, uh, having a campus with 40-odd uh, flats uh, for faculty lying vacant is a huge challenge. And people would say, why are you keeping this vacant? And yet, at the same time, if you fill them up, then you have shut down all options for growth and development. I had, uh, when start, at start, of the, of the IGIDR, I had gone and discussed with VKR Rao, uh, Lakhdawala, and others who were involved in setting up institutions. And um, the one advice that all of them gave is just please don't fill up the place quickly. Be careful and gradually select this faculty member. I think we were, we were very fortunate in getting really good faculty members over the years. And it can be seen by the fact that uh, uh, you know, uh, we have 
past faculty members of the institute are in distinguished positions, directors of other research institutes. Manoj Panda is in IEG. Uh, Mahendra Dev was at CES, and now he's here. We have, uh, and so on. So, and Subir Gokhan is deputy governor. So we have had many distinguished faculty members who have made, who have distinguished themselves as well. I think uh, one of the point in the campus was that, you know, you need to keep it clean. And uh, often the, the problem that we found, we had these garbage pails in which we were collecting garbage and kept at one side. And often I see this garbage pail were turned over and they were all strewn, garbage was strewn all over. And uh, when we inquired, we found out there is the cats and the dogs in search of food that they turn, off this, uh, turn over this thing. So we decided that we should really try to sort organic and inorganic garbage and uh, have a vermiculture pit in which we put the organic garbage and the inorganic garbage then is not mixed up and is then kept there. And so one Gandhi Jayanti day through Shramadan we built a vermiculture pit and I hope it's still functioning, but it did function for a number of years. <laughs> and uh, an additional thing was then at the second stage we did try to, uh, we had the effluent from campus housing and other places being treated through a, a vermiculture plot and is now used for gardening purposes. So we did try to make this campus not only functioning but also uh, sustainable in many ways. I think uh, the PhD program uh, uh, and the deemed university was really a huge challenge and a very satisfying thing. When we started with the PhD, MPhil program first, PhD program, the question that was raised uh, is that uh, how would you ensure good students coming here? Because unless you have good students, the program would not be successful. And my uh, uh, suggestion then was that, look, uh, uh, one thing is that, uh, you know, there are students, good in e economic students, who cannot pursue PhD because they have some financial constraints and they have to take up a job after their master's degree. And there may be other engineers and other disciplines people from engineers, mathematics, sciences, who might, after doing their bachelor's degree, might find that they would like to study economics or do something and have more interest in it. So if we give stipend, which is equivalent to what a lecturer uh, would get as with an MA degree in economics, or what a BTEC would get in his first job, then we would attract good students. And that's the level of stipend, which was substantially higher than that was what was given in those days in other places was given and <clears throat> we were able to attract some very good students from with uh, even from IITs and others who then later on uh, did excellent work. So I think this was uh, one area that, that I f feel uh, IGIR has made uh, a good name. Dr. Rangarajan said, and he has been saying for a long time that we should really have a undergraduate program because there are really very few good undergraduate economic school in the country. And I think it will be a wonderful idea. Uh, uh, IGIR has come to a stage when it can do that. What we need to do is to get the land across the institute allocated to IGIR and build a campus there for the undergraduate colleges. And if I think if we can do that, if the Reserve Bank can, can, can do that, it would be an excellent idea to, uh, to start a, a, an undergraduate program. We had many, many such things I can go on. Uh, research was another very important area. And I thought that uh, making, uh, in the institute needed to make a name through its research because that was very important. And that institute uh, had to address some important policy issues because that was critically the important thing. thing. So uh, we did a number of studies on policies and reforms at that time, and we were able to get people to work together on this. And I think that collaborative research that we were able to promote at IGIDR, the number of faculty members worked, was quite important. Now, if you try to get a few faculty members to work together, it is often very complicated. Their interactions and other things can become very difficult. They may not look at the issues at the same way. But I felt that if one is able to set up a problem in a way that you know you can then identify parts of it which can be then done different by people and then you can integrate it 
uh, that can really work. And we use that mod model in a number of studies. We did a study on, for, on policy options for economic reforms. We did a paper from uh, a background paper for the Rio de Janeiro Conference of Earth Summit on what, uh, a, what is the cause of unsustainable devel global development. We looked at um, uh, uh, you know, questions on rural poverty, uh, incidence issues and policy for the Asian Development Bank, and a number of other studies, natural resource accounting. We developed a framework for it so that you can see what are the cost, economic cost of environmental uh, consequences of economic activities can be integrated into it. And finally, of course, the India Development Report uh, was a major initiative that we were able to start. In 94, 95, uh, you know, Indian, uh, in, India International Center in Delhi every year brings out a midterm review. So they asked us, uh, uh, Malcolm Adisha Shaya was then the chair, he asked us to, to prepare the India Development Report. And then I think we got all the faculty members together and decided what is it, and each one wrote a chapter and we were able to produce and, and try to make sure that it is as lucid and non-technical, but as rigorous as possible. And that report was very well received. Malcolm says, Adisha Shaya said, this is the best report he has received so far. And that inspired us to go into an India development report. And in the first one we produced in 97, that time it was we, we produced this report and we didn't want to wait. So we produced, uh, the whole production process was com compacted into three weeks. We did the thing internally, uh, the typesetting and everything, and it was just given to Oxford to print, print it. And that was extremely well received. And I remember that uh, once I had, a few years later, I'd gone to, to Germany for a meeting and the under secretary, the third secretary who came to receive me at the, at the airport said, I was been looking forward to meeting you because your India development report helped me get through my, get through my IFS exams. So I thought that was really a, a pleasure to hear that. And I'm, uh, I'm very happy that the India Development Report keeps coming out with uh, e e ever more impressive uh, questions so far, I mean, uh, versions so far. I think we also had a number of, uh, I should say, the Dr. Rangarajan said we should really look at East Asian experience. The, we had a couple of studies, and actually two books were published also, on uh, what we call tigers and cubs and the experience of, the, uh, uh, of East Asian economies. But we could not get Asians to come and study here, but we did have our faculty members visit these Asian countries and did a study of how these economies are function and what, what lessons can we learn from that. Uh, we also had uh, something called a state of the art workshops that we developed. That the idea again was the same kind that in a seminar that you have and you invite people from other institutions and ICSR institutions so people can benefit from the uh, high quality uh, seminar you organize. Their idea was that we will invite some state uh, experts and conduct a two, three weeks teaching or training program and that we also invited people from other institutions mm -hmm. and so on in universities. The first one was conducted by Alan Mann on uh, modeling and he introduced people to GAMS model, and which really then we had a number of further development done on this. Uh, similarly, and this also helped other, con other institutions. There are many models were developed in other institutions based on it, coordinated by IGIDR. Similarly, David Kendrick gave a work on, the, on optimal control, and that has also led to a couple of theses. I think one was done at Pune, University of Pune, Gokhale Institute, and another at, uh, at uh, Delhi's Bombay School as well. So I would say that yes, this is a, 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 this had also worked well, and I wish we had done more of it, though. I think we can still do that. I think promoting a collegiate culture was also extremely important, I felt, and as again, Dr. Rangarajan pointed out, that institutions survive and thrive if there is a participatory uh, development. And I think I, we did really had a very participative management uh, of the institute, faculty meetings, everyone was invited. We had long discussions, sometimes frustrating, but often uh, I think at the end constructive. 
and that we were able to take most of the decisions in a, in a, in a cooperative, collegiate manner. And I think if one were to look back, you, you would say, yes, this, uh, the two years of effort or few years of efforts which cost some of my personal research has been certainly more than well worth it. And it has been a great satisfaction, a matter of great pleasure and satisfaction that IGID, even after I left, uh, has continued to function. Because many institutions in India, founder, when the founder leaves, uh, seem to go down. Uh, the ghost of the founder uh, haunts people. I'm very delighted to see that my ghost doesn't haunt this place. I think uh, 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 I wish IGIDR even uh, more success in the coming years, more glorious and fruitful things, and the next 25 hours. And I, I hope that uh, it will live up to the expectations. Uh, congratulations. And I do hope that when uh, Rahul Gandhi comes 25 years later, he would say, Hame bhi dekha hai. Thank you. <laughs>